These don't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> you cut the wires off. Oh, do you remember no. this? Of course I remember this. The setup for this before you start playing it is they had me on the show. I was backstage waiting to go on. They didn't tell me it would be an all-female audience. They bring me on and the producer gives me a shit-eating grin like, ha, ha, ha. I'm thinking, no, no, no. I'm not trapped in here with them. They're trapped in here with me. I'm going to rip these bitches. <laughs> and my whole thing when I used to do a lot of chat shows is I just thought everyone's my bitch. The producers are just bitches. I don't mean necessarily female, but they're just my, my punks. Uh, I'm much smarter than any of these people. I'm just going to treat them with sarcasm, contempt, and ridicule. A man says women say one thing but mean another. Another man teaches other men how to get women into bed. And finally, one man says men need to learn to listen to what women want. Hello, everyone. I don't know if you noticed by the shots that we're taking, but this is an audience of all women today. We have invited them here for a reason, because we have three men with different points of view. These three men think they know what women think. And today we will find out. Meet Ross Jeffries. He says he got tired of being Mr. Nice Guy and being dumped by women. So he changed his ways and he wrote a book for other men who feel the same way. It is called mm -hmm. How to Get the Women You Desire into Bed. It's Ross, what do women really want? I don't care what they want. I only care what they respond to. See, my focus is a little bit different from your other guests. There's what women say they want, there's what women think they want, and then there's what they actually respond to. I'm not an academic, I'm not a theoretician. I'm interested in what works on the street when it's time to date and mate. And what women actually respond to is not what they say they want. So what do they respond to? They really respond to a guy who's a challenge, a guy who's a question mark, a guy who keeps them guessing. You see, in the beginning, the less attractive you are physically, the more you have to rely on your attitude. And that's what I wrote my book for. I wrote my book for the average looking, even ugly guy <laughs> who goes out there in the real world and tries to be a nice guy, gets his head kicked in. So no more Mr. Nice Guy. You can be pleasant. You see, you, we, we got to define our terms. By nice, I mean accommodating. When you accommodate, you get what the commode gets. You get the crapola. You have to learn how to say no to a woman. But so, th so this, I guess, attitude is your word. This attitude that you now have is more appealing to women? The attitude is vastly more appealing. Basically, the attitude is I make no excuses for what I want. And number two, I don't need you. You need me. Now, bear in mind, I don't verbalize it. Exactly. Now, you see, you see this response here. You should never verbalize the attitude. You're you show it in your behavior. You're, you're, I found that the nice guys who, when I'm on the radio or TV, nice guys call up and go, well, it wouldn't be myself. It's the nice guy who's the phony, who's not being yeah. his real self, because he's afraid he can't do anything. So you're going back to my point. All men are jerks. No, no. And some no, no. hide it. No, no. Isn't that, wait a minute. What you just said is all no, men are sort of no. jerks and some of them try to sugarcoat no, what I'm it. Is that what is, he just said? No, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, I said I was going to stay out of it and I can't. <laughs> what I'm saying is, is that there's a massive power imbalance in favor of women when it comes to dating and sex. And women through their behavior, through showing men what they actually respond to, force men to act in a certain <laughs> way. One thing the women's movement has taught me is to avoid speaking for other people. So I would, I, I would like to ask you, if you think that men need to change in some fundamental ways and do a better job at listening to you, please clap your hands. What smarmy? Wait a minute. Do we have this guy's like he's running? This guy's like he's running for office yeah, here. He knows how to work the crowd. Okay. And, and you Look, know, I'm not interested. But you know what? It's not a stretch for him interested. to get this audience to agree with his no, point. Wait a minute. But I am not interested in what applies in the mummified halls of academia. I understand I'm not speaking as an a academic. PhD, I'm not speaking as an academic. Deeper. I'm yeah. talking for the little guy out there who gets his head kicked in <laughs> and always winds up being the buddy, the big brother, and here is, let's be friends. Yeah. You want a friend, lady? Get a dog. Okay. And here's the thing. You mentioned that uh, nice guys are phonies. What is your uh, stance on that? Nice guys are phonies. Why? Well, we have to define what we mean by nice guys. See, I make a distinction between nice and pleasant. I'm not a nice guy. I stopped being a nice guy 32 years ago, but I am pleasant. 
The distinction is nice means a few things. Number one, you don't own your sexuality. You either bury it and hold it tight or you spray all over the place. You, you're gushing lust or you're shut down. So you don't own your sexuality. Number two, you have no passion outside of wanting to please women. Number three, you don't set boundaries or stand up for yourself. Number four, you're a poor leader. So the problem with nice guys is they think because they're always trying to please, they think trying to please is what will get a woman attracted to them. And then they get angry and resentful when they don't. And so they hide. Do they express their anger to the woman? No. They bottle it up and pretend that it's going to be okay. So they're, they're phonies because they hide their sexuality and they deny their anger and they'll pretend to like something just to get the woman's favor or pretend that it's okay that a woman treats them poorly. So if she cancels at the last minute, he goes, Morale is enraged. And I'm not saying rage is the best response to have to women. Obviously it's not. But these are the reasons why I say nice guys are phony. So power, by the contrast, pleasant is power that's held in check, exercised with elegance, and surrounded with a sense of self-respect. So I'm pleasant. I don't, I don't put women down. I don't neg women. I think that's all bullshit. I don't push on women's low self-esteem like other schools do. But I don't take any shit. I own my sexuality. I have my own life outside of what I do with women. And I know who I am as a human being. I'm not conflicted sexually. So it's okay to be pleasant, but nice is, a, is not only a death sentence as far as interpersonally, what you do with other people, but intrapersonally, it shrivels you up because underneath that niceness is anger and resentment and entitlement and envy so many nice guys are filled with envy towards men who are successful envy is the death knell it is the death of your own personal peace and success because when you envy someone it sends a deep deep belief in your mind that you can't have what the other person does if you if i showed you a one dollar us bill you wouldn't envy me because you have the equivalent or you do have the bill but if I showed you $10 million, you might start to envy because you don't have it. So envy is a very dangerous thing, even more than fear, even more than anxiety. Envy and resentment are the real hidden poisons, I think, that many guys carry into game. And unless you know how to dump that, then confidence and game and all the rest of it is, is not going to get you as far as you would hope. That's my answer to your first question.